In today's lesson, we are going to use angles formed by a transversal to prove two lines are parallel. So really, we're going to go backwards from what we did in the last lesson. So let's remind ourselves um, of what we know about parallel lines cut by a transversal. We learned that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the corresponding angles are congruent. So we had four sets of congruent angles from corresponding angles. Um, and then alternate interior angles theorem said that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of alternate interiors are congruent. Likewise with exteriors, and then we had same side interior angles. Um, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the two pairs of same side interiors were supplementary. So today, like I said, we're going to go backwards. So I want you to remember that word converse that we learned in the last unit. The converse was found by switching the hypothesis and conclusion. So if you notice, each of our theorems have been stated as um, if-then statements. So we are going to create converses of our theorems by switching the hypothesis and conclusion. So our first one, we're going to start with the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. So instead of saying if we have parallel lines cut by a transversal, then these angles are congruent, we're going to go backwards. We're going to say if we know that parallel or if we know that corresponding angles are congruent then we can say that the lines are parallel. So let's look at a really easy example. We're going to use the converse of the corresponding angles postulate and the given information to show that in this picture L and M should be parallel. So if it tells us that 4 and 8 are congruent, we need to look at the picture and decide yes, 4 and 8 are corresponding angles, they're in matching positions. So, since corresponding angles are congruent, we can say, yes, the lines are parallel because of the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. Okay, let's try one that's a little tougher. Add some algebra to it. We're going to do the same problem. We're going to use the converse of the corresponding angles postulate to show that the lines are parallel. But this time, it does not tell us that 7 and 3 are congruent. So we have to decide first if they are. So they give us angle measures, which normally we would say, because the lines are parallel, we know they're uh, equal, so we'll set them equal and solve. But this time we're going to see if they're parallel, because they told us that x equals 30. So we're going to plug x in to each of those measures. So we're going to start by putting 30 in for x in angle 3. By doing so, 4 times 30 is 120, minus 80 gives us 40. So we want to see, do we get the same thing? When we plug into angle 7. So we're going to say 30, or 3 times 30 minus 50, which also gives us 40. So we see that that means that the measure of those two angles are equal. If we were proving this in a, in a proof, we'd have to say, well, how do I know that these are equal? Well, since um, the measure of angle 3 is 40 and the measure of angle 7 is 40, notice we have a connector here. So we can say that 3 is equal to 7 using the transitive property. Now if we know angles are equal, their measures are equal by what it means to be congruent, that means they're also congruent. So now we've said that these angles are congruent and those angles are corresponding angles. So we can say that yes, our lines are parallel because of what we just learned, the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. We also have the converse of our other three theorems where we can switch their hypothesis and conclusion. So they're all pretty much the same idea. If I have alternate interior angles that are congruent, then I can say that yes, the lines are parallel. The converse of alternate exterior, if I have alternate exterior angles congruent, then I can say that the lines are parallel. Or with the same side interior angles, the converse of that says if that the, the same side interior angles are supplementary, then our lines also have to be parallel. So let's try one that's similar to that. It says use the given information and the theorems you have learned to show that R is parallel to S. Well they give us that 4 is congruent to 8. So notice we still need to know our angle pairs so that we can identify what they are for this problem. And 4 is congruent to 8. Well those are alternate exterior angles. 
And now, since we have alternate exterior angles, we can say that the lines are parallel because of the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, let's try another one. It says angle 2 is 10x plus 8, and angle 3 is 25x minus 5, or minus 3, and they tell us that x equals 5. So given this information, we want to prove or show that R is parallel to S. So first, we look at angle 2, and we plug X into its measure by substituting, just like we did on the last problem, like this, and we get 50 plus 8 is 58. Then we see that um, the measure of angle 3 is 122 by substituting in for x. So we want to decide what kind of relationship do we get from those angles. So first we might want to look at what kind of angle pair is that. Well I see that they're both on the same side of the transversal and it looks like they're inside the two lines. So let's hope that those two angles are um, supplementary. If I add those two angles I do get 180 and we said yes those are same side interiors. So since we're saying that same side interiors are supplementary, we can say yes, the lines are parallel because of the converse of the same side interior angles theorem. So notice anytime we use, um, anytime we're proving lines parallel, we're going backwards, so we're using the converse of our statements. All right, let's do another. This one says refer to the diagram and our information to prove our lines parallel. So same question. And it says that 4 is equal to 8. Well, remember that our theorem said if those angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. We need to start seeing that equal is slightly different than congruent. So to be equal, that means that they are congruent because of the definition of congruent angles. And now that we've said that the, line, the angles are congruent, let's look in the picture. 4 and 8, like we did last time, are alternate exterior. By identifying that, we can say that the lines are parallel because of the converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem. Okay, we're going to try one that's a little bit more difficult. We're going to do a proof here to end this out. It says, given that P and R are parallel and 1 is congruent to 3, we want to prove that L is, is parallel to M. So let's start out with the proof. We'll kind of have to go back and forth here. If we look at our proof, we're going to try and fill in the missing pieces. So we start by saying that P is parallel to R. And remember what we always start with, we always start with the given. So the reason we know that those two lines are parallel is because it's given to us. Okay, so now that we have P and R parallel, it says we're going to look at angles 3 and 2. So when we look at 3 and 2, we want to know why are those congruent. Well, if we look at P and R as the parallels, notice that M is a part of 2 and 3. So let's see what kind of angle pair those are. Those are alternate exterior angles. So we know that they're congruent because we said their lines were parallel using the alternate exterior angles theorem. Okay? Now our next step says that we're using the reason given and we want to come up with this statement. Well notice in the given we had two parts and we only used one in the first step. So we still need to introduce one congruent to three. So let's take one congruent to three and we'll put it in for the statement that goes with given. Now it says we're going to use the transitive property. So anytime I see transitive property, I want to remember that we need a connector. So if we look at our last two statements, I see that they have something in common. Notice they both have an angle 3 at the front and at the back. So if we connected those statements with angle 3. Now we can say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And for our last step, it says prove L is parallel to M. So with this, all, this last step, 1 congruent to 2, how would that tell me that L should be parallel to M? Well, if I see that 1 and 2 are corresponding angles. So if corresponding angles are congruent, then we know our lines are parallel by our new rule, the converse of the corresponding angles postulate. 
So just realize that this whole process is the same as what we did last time, but we're going backwards. I'll see you soon, and we'll give that some practice in class.